my name's David and I'm a research associate in the Department of Psychology. Uh, I'm also a member of Lancaster Security. Um, psychology, uh, I'm going to be very quick, it's only got five minutes, but it's difficult to summarise 30 years of group research in psychology, but a lot of it's basically spent its time looking at how groups are effective or what makes an effective group, which is great. But there's very little or a lot less that's been done on how you disrupt a group. And it's not always the case that you can just reverse engineer this. Now, there's two reasons I think why that's important. One, I think given all the talks today, uh, particularly the last one, it's more the case now that groups are not just doing good online, particularly in a cybersecurity context. Um, you have people online who have never met each other, like Wikipedia, like many forums that people find advice on, uh, that, that, that are doing a great job for the common good. But you also have groups like Anonymous, uh, other political groups that are doing a lot of harm. And so there is a, a reason to perhaps try and disrupt them. Uh, the second reason is that it is actually a lot more fun to try and disrupt a group from an experimental point of view as a, as a psychologist rather than just always helping along the way. Now, I, the, the kind of early research that inspired uh, our online research is, is not taken from an online context. It's taken from face-to-face -face groups. Um, so the, to the, oh, got a laser pointer. This graph here, uh, these people here were basically given, a whole lot of groups were given this opportunity where they had to build a marshmallow tower. Uh, and the, the whole point of this was to, as a group, to build the tallest tower you could. But what we were doing with some groups is we were trying to trip them up with, and what's nice about this is it's not really been tried to the same extent, so we're really kind of guessing what would be good strategies to, to try and trip these groups up. And one strategy that we found was particularly helpful was to provide groups misinformation about how they might go about building these towers. So in this case, we sneakily, uh, we showed groups at the start of the task pictures of marshmallow towers that were actually impossible to build the materials they had. We actually made towers, but we just super glue to stick them together. Uh, so of course, what, what clearly was happening in this case is groups would take, we didn't let them keep the pictures, we took them away, uh, but groups were obviously taking that information, believing it was from a reliable source, me, uh, and then making a complete disaster of the towers. The other thing that we found was quite effective was putting an actor in the group who would basically try and disrupt that group by trying to get them to talk about other stuff apart from building this tower. So that graph really just shows the average height of towers that were built. So that's great, but how does that relate to uh, cybersecurity? What we've now started to do is run similar experiments online. Now obviously we can't get people to build marshmallow towers online, but what we have been getting them to do is basically what we could best describe as a game of Cluedo, where they're given information about a murder case, people have to work together as a team. They meet over five different occasions, and each time they're given a bit more information. Now the most effective strategy to do this is to work together, share the workload, and you'll, you'll get to the end. But taking the two most effective disruption techniques <laughs> we've seen in face-to-face -face contexts, we are on some groups just are allowed to do this task, we don't, they get on with it. Other groups, we give them misinformation on their second meeting, and then the confederate in the group kicks in on their fourth meeting. And in another condition, it's the opposite. So they get the confederate kind of tries to disrupt them in the second meeting, and they get misinformation on the fourth meeting. Now, this, this graph here just shows some preliminary data. So this is percentages of groups that have been successful. So what's, it, what's good about this is that it, near every single group where we've given misinformation about a task has failed to, to, to get the answer right at the end. What's maybe a bit more surprising is that the confederate input has actually made this, these uh, groups more effective. Now, why that might be the case is possibly because uh, the confederate may inadvertently be helping along early discussions in the group. Um, and actually then when they do get the misinformation further down the line, they've actually already kind of decided what the outcome is going to be in this case and controls are kind of in between those two. The other kind of measures we're looking at is how is a kind of attitudinal measure of participants, you know, in terms of how much are they trust in each other within the group, which is also partly to check if, they've, if they can guess if there's a confederate in the group or not. So far, no group's managed to do that. Um, so in terms of where we're taking this next, um, certainly colleagues in America have started to look at how you can automate systems to either help disrupt groups or, or help groups that are in an online context when they're trying to, to achieve a goal. Um, I think it also as a general kind of observation, it's really interesting what people have said about, particularly this morning's talks about privacy and security and what people should and shouldn't do online. These are all, it's largely students that take part in this, but the number of students who you say to in the first day, do not give away any personal information while you're doing these tasks, the first thing they do is start doing that. Uh, uh, the other thing, um, 
As a backstory, a group of students then proceeded to start dissecting a lecture that I'd given a few days before, completely forgetting the fact that, I'd give, that I could read everything that they were saying. Um, and then are shocked to discover that actually th this isn't just a kind of closed system that no one else can read because they forget once they're lost in the task. Uh, anyway, that's my time up, so thanks very much.